So what is going on guys, welcome back to another video here on the Freak Flyers YouTube channel and today we're going to be continuing the 101 series, skydiving 101 series by talking about how to get into free flying. Free flying is the most practiced, most well known discipline in skydiving by far. I'm sure all of you have heard of free flying and it's if it's not the most practiced, it's the second most practiced right after maybe belly flying or something like that. So without further ado, let's actually get started. First of all, let's just talk about a little bit the history of free fly and what is free flying. Free flying just refers to any non-belly to earth form of flight. Usually we refer to free flying as to flying vertical, but of course angle flying is also free flying. Anything that's not belly to earth is considered free flying. It's really instead of being a, a two dimension uh, way of flying, you're flying in, in all dimensions, in all axes, uh, rotations, and all that stuff. So it's the position, uh, the angle of your flight is defined by your torso. So if your torso is at 90 degrees, which means it's perpendicular to the earth, it's going to be, you know, vertical free flying. If you're at any other angle, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, more than 45, it's going to be angle flying. But in this video, we're just going to be talking about the vertical, you know, your body being perpendicular to the earth. What's going to happen here is two things. First of all, you're going to have way more, way more fun because you're going to have another completely different a dimension of flight instead of just being two dimensions where just like spinning around and all that stuff on your belly you're going to be able to have as much freedom as possible that's why it's called free fly and also what's going to happen is because your your body footprint is going to be way smaller you're going to have faster speeds now this is why i need to make this video because of the faster speeds and because of how different it is you do need to have more experience and you do need to have some uh, form of um, coaching in order to learn how to practice free flying. So, a little bit of the history of free flying. Free flying was started in the 80s, created supposedly by Olaf Zipser and his friends. Of course, they wanted to not just be flying belly to earth, so they actually started to uh, play around with different things, different uh, f styles of flying. At Monauti, Marco Tesi started at Monauti, you know, the, the beginnings of angle flying, and Olaf Zipser enjoyed more uh, vertical flying. So they started that in America in the 80s. First up, requirements for free flying. You can free fly whenever you want. I'm not your boss, I'm not your dad, so I can't stop you from free flying. But if you want to free fly in the drop zone where I'm a coach, you gotta have a B license, a knowledgeable altimeter, and you have to have a free fly friendly rig. Of course, you have to have a helmet and an AAD and a visual altimeter, all that stuff. I'm talking about the requirements specific for free flying. A B license, audible altimeter, and a free fly friendly rig. That's like the minimum. Why do you need a B license? Well, you can get a B license at about 50 jumps and there's other requirements, but let's just talk about the, the minimum jump limit. It's good that until you have at least, at the very, very least, 50 jumps, you get a good belly foundation because low levels of experience at high speeds can be really, really dangerous, both for you and for the coach. And also because usually the rigs for people that have about more than 50, more than 100 jumps are usually smaller. They actually are free fly friendly, but these days, even student rigs are free fly friendly. But they are smaller, which means they're easier to manage when you're flying. You're also going to have a rig that fits you better, Again, because it's a little bit smaller, so it's going to be easier for you to learn. Why do you need a knowledgeable altimeter? It is mandatory. I don't care who you are, this or that. You need a knowledgeable altimeter if you're doing free fly. You're going to be in new situations, you're going to be new, doing new exercises, and you're going to be distracted. So you need to have an audible altimeter. Also, if you're starting out on your sit flying, you have your hands almost behind your back, it's just better for the workflow to have an audible altimeter because you're not going to be as worried about checking the altitude as you would if you only had a visual altimeter and you had to constantly be putting your hand in front of your face. I'm going to say, you know, check your alti. It's important to check your alti, I know, but it's also mandatory to have an audible altimeter for free flying. And why is it important to have a free fly friendly rig? Because you don't want to die. Free fly friendly rigs have adequate protection of every part involved in the deployment of the main and of the reserve parachutes. And not following this rule of having a free fly friendly rig being mandatory can cause you injury or can cause you death. Best case scenario, you're going to be featured in Friday Freakout. Now that I've talked about all these mandatory requirements, all that stuff, let's just talk about the different steps you're going to take into becoming a gung-ho pro free flyer. First off, you got to do your AFF. Yeah, I know. Who makes, the, who makes these rules these days? You got to do an AFF to be a free flyer? It's so boring. You know, get your AFF. You got to start doing free fall. Afterwards, until you get your B license, as I mentioned, you got to have 
a good belly foundation. Learn how to fly on your belly because if you don't know how to walk, how do you want to run? So you got to learn how to fly on your belly before you learn how to free fly. Afterwards, once you have your B license, uh, once you have a little bit more, you know, somewhat of a belly uh, flight experience, you're going to enroll in your first free fly course. Now, this first free fly course is just going to be two things. First of all, it's going to be theory. You're going to have an adequate amount of theory. You're going to be in a classroom for maybe two hours. During theory, you're going to be learning about a little bit of the history of free flying as I talked to you guys about a little bit more in depth. You're going to be learning about the actual process in which you're going to learn to free fly. You're going to learn all about safety and you're going to learn about, you know, the body position, your anatomy, your body flight, all that kind of stuff. You're going to learn in the classroom first, then you're going to practice on the ground and then you're going to do it on the sky. And usually what you're going to learn first is you're going to learn how to fly on your back. Then you're going to learn how to actually get to free fly speeds by going to the ball position or safety position, whatever you want to call it. Then you're actually going to learn how to transition from your back onto your the sit flying position. You're going to learn some variations of the sit flying position, sit flying stag, stand up. You're going to learn how to control that but those positions in all axes. You're going to learn how to rotate, how to go forwards, backwards, side to side, all of that stuff. And once you're a somewhat acceptable sit flyer, you're going to do a couple of zoo dives. Yes, this is really important. You got to do zoo dives. You got to jump with your friends. You got to do those crazy free fly jumps where you're sit flying and there's two other guys sit flying who barely know how to sit fly next to you, that's important for you to actually evolve. Now, it's also really important to understand that this is going to be one of the most dangerous times in your skydiving career. You're lacking experience and so are your peers. So all of you are jumping together, running some risks. How are you going to reduce these risks? By applying all the knowledge you learned in the safety course. Of course, all the knowledge about your gear about it being free fly friendly, how to check it, how to inspect yourself before you leave the plane, how to properly leave the plane. And of course, you're going to learn proper free flying etiquette, such as don't go to your belly, uh, don't just out of nowhere track away, all that stuff that you're going to learn on the safety course. There's no point in me teaching this in a video. Afterwards, you're probably going to want to start flying head down. Now, everyone has a different method of going from sit fly to head down. Your school, wherever, wh wherever you want to learn, they're going to teach you their way and there's one thing you got to be sure is that their way is the best way to learn because if you think their way is not good you're not going to be able to learn so learn listen to your coach and do whatever he says and you're going to probably be able to learn head down in no time once you actually start learning how to fly head down this is also some very dangerous times in your career you're going to be a maybe solid set flyer and you're going to going to be a questionable head down flyer. It's going to be tempting for you to go on those crazy zoo dives where there's three or four sit flyers. It's going to be tempting for you to go on head down. This can cause accidents. I've seen this causing accidents. You know what I mean. That B licensed girl, she barely sit flies and she's going to fly, she's going to sit fly super slow and you're going to want to do your crazy head down because, oh, I can fly head down. She's going to want me because I fly head down and you're going to, you know, constantly be on your back because you want to lift up and be next to her and then next thing you know, you're hitting someone because you're like a missile. If this situation sounds familiar to you it's probably because it happened to you or you've seen it happen because it kind of happens to everyone at least once you actually happens to you or you see it happen to someone because it's skydiving it's normal but it is important to understand that maybe you're running a little bit of risk if you are in this situation and it's important first of all take steps to reduce th that risk to uh, understand you're actually running risk and to accept the fact that you're at risk and do whatever you can in your power to reduce that risk because getting injured sucks but being featured on Friday Freakout doesn't so you gotta weigh out the, the situation here right once you're adequately flying in head down and you're adequately flying in sit flying you are actually going to be able to learn how to do transitions various different types of transitions if you've ever gone to a wind tunnel the wind tunnel coach probably tried to sell you some transitions well you're going to be doing that but it's not going to be boring because it's skydiving it's not wind tunnel after you learn those transitions, you're actually going to start doing a little bit more serious formations. There's still going to be zoo dives, there's still dangerous times, but you're not the one putting everyone at risk. You're the one at risk, but you're at risk because of other people. Why? Because usually in this point of your career, you're going to be jumping with people that have a little bit less experience than you, a little bit more experience than you, and they might not have the same mentality as you when it comes to safety. So you, you have to understand when you're doing these zoo dives, when you're doing these crazy formations, you are at a little bit of a risk. So it is important to maybe sometimes be conscious about what jumps you're going to be doing and think, hey, maybe that eight-way sit fly jump where the combined total of jumps of the eight people doesn't even get to 10,000. Maybe I shouldn't go. You know, sometimes we have to make those types of decisions to actually save our own ass. 
It's important to have that in mind once you are in this step. It's important if you want to get to the last step of your free flying career, you got to, you got to get there alive and you got got to get there injury free. Now, after this, you're actually going to move up, you know, in the um, progression ladder and you're going to you both you and your friends are going to start jumping maybe with more experienced people or all of you actually start getting better and you're going to be starting doing some serious formations. I'm talking about like maybe starting to do six way head downs, maybe just four way head downs sequential moves, maybe you're doing uh, six-way um, head-ups, which are harder than six-way head-downs, believe it or not. Uh, if you guys do free fly, you know what I'm talking about. But once you're starting to do these, uh, you know, these head-up exits where you're approaching head-up, you're actually docking on a head-up formation, if, even if it's not a big formation, maybe just a four-way, once you start doing those sorts of formations, um, you're actually going to start be uh, getting to a level where you're actually becoming proficient in free flying. Now, here is the point where you actually have to choose where you want to go. Now you have two options. You can either stay static and go for uh, big ways, big way records, all that stuff. You can go onto the artistic free flying or you can go to a third option which has to do with angle flying and actually doing like dynamic angle flying jumps but I'm not talking about angle flying this video so I'm not going to actually refer to it. I'm just going to talk about the vertical flight. So if you want to do formations, if that's what you want, then you're probably going to want to start doing camps where they're focusing on static formations or sequentials. Now, these are the most fun you can have. You're going to meet so many people. You're going to make so many friends. This is like the friendly way of getting into professional vertical flying. Why? You're going to be jumping with 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 people. You're going to be doing world records. You're going to be doing sequentials, all that stuff eventually, of course. And you're going to have some... This is the most fun you can have in skydiving with a lot of people. Now, if you choose that you, you do not like human beings and you want to be constantly fighting with everyone, you can choose the path of building a free flight team. Now, building a free flight team is going to require you to get two other friends. Yeah, I know, right? Two friends. Who has two friends these days? So you got to get two friends. Both of them have to have similar experience level to yours. And something that's not mandatory, but it is going to be important if you're planning on competing, which is they got to be the same nationality as you. So, you know, that German friend you have is probably not going to work, but get two friends that are the same nationality as you. They're maybe on the same level of flying. One of them is ugly. I'm going to be the camera flyer. You know, the camera flyer is always the ugly one. And then you're going to have two performers. One of them is going to be the team leader. The other one is going to be another performer. Whoever the team leader is, is going to be the one, you know, usually just scheduling stuff. There's not, not much to being a team leader other than, you know, scheduling things and calling everyone and making the WhatsApp groups. That's basically it. Other than that, you're going to start your team. Now, camera flyers have their responsibilities. Team leaders have their responsibilities. Team coaches have their responsibilities. Performers have their responsibilities. But when you're just starting out, it's just something you and two other friends having fun and going to competitions and maybe starting to win some medals. If you are in this step nine, congratulations. You're either a vertical record holder or you're a successful free fly team. I think this is how you do it. And if you guys have any questions or complimentary information you, you would like to add, you can do so again in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, la-di-da-di-da. -da -da. And as always, I'll see you next time.